Thank you very much, Hans. Well, it's now my great pleasure to say a few words about Karen Ullenbeck's, Ullenbeck's remarkable life and work. Obviously, to try and explain her contribution to mathematics in just a few minutes, even to an audience of mathematicians, would be impossible, let alone to give a more accessible talk to non-experts, but I will try. Karen Keskula, the eldest of four children, was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1942. At school, she was inspired by physics and read popular books by George Gamow and Fred Hoyle. Enrolling at the University of Michigan, she initially planned to major in physics, but soon discovered that the intellectual challenge of pure mathematics was what really excited her. Her PhD was on a very profound concept, and so I want to give you a simple example. It's called the lifeguard problem. Now, to rescue the swimmer, the lifeguard needs to get to him as quickly as possible. You might think that the fastest route is also the shortest one, a straight line. But she can run along the beach much faster than she can swim, so maybe she should minimize her time in the water, even if the total distance is now a little longer. In fact, the correct answer is one that is remarkably similar to the way a light beam refracts as it moves from air into water or glass. This is the quickest path. To work out the point at which she should enter the water, we use what is known as Fermat's principle of least time, which is a simple example of the field that Karen became one of the greatest experts on, the calculus of variations. This is the study of how small changes in one quantity can help us find the maximum or minimum value of another quantity, like the quickest routes for the lifeguard. Karen Ullenbeck's work on the calculus of variations was the springboard for her contribution to so many other areas of mathematics. At school, we learn that geometry is the study of shapes, algebra, the generalization of arithmetic operations, and calculus is the study of change. For Karen Ullenbeck, these fields merged to become more exotic-sounding subjects like topology, group theory, differential geometry, minimal surfaces, harmonic maps, gauge theory, and integrable systems. It's difficult to pick out her most important papers, but I will try. Among her most highly cited works are two key papers on a subject called harmonic mapping, written in the early 80s. The first with Jonathan Sachs, on the existence of minimal immersions of two spheres. That's not two spheres, but two spheres. <laughs> However, to explain it requires a level of analytical geometry that is way beyond the scope of this presentation, and indeed of my own expertise, to be honest. The second was published the following year, this time with Richard Shane, on a regularity um, theory for uh, harmonic maps. But some of her most influential and important works have been in papers that she wrote alone, such as these two on gauge theory, a profoundly important mathematical idea in modern physics that has helped us understand the different forces of nature and how they are related. High-energy physicists seek to find the basic building blocks of the universe and have, over the past few decades, developed what's now called the standard model of particle physics. This model relies on a number of mathematical theorems which Karen Ullenbeck has helped develop. In fact, many would say that her most influential paper was the one in 1986 that she co-wrote with another great mathematician, Xing Tong Yao, in which they proved the existence of what are known as Hermitian Yang Mills equations in any complex dimension, a result that influenced the work of another great mathematician, Simon Donaldson, and led to what is now called the donaldson ullenbeck yao theorem. It states that on a complex Kala manifold, any semi-stable holomorphic vector bundle with trivial determinant line bundle admits a Hermite-Einstein connection. You see what I mean about not wanting to go into detail? <laughs> Instantons are, are mathematical objects that appear as the solutions of certain uh, uh, class of equations, and they're very important in physics. Ullenbeck became one of the world's leading experts in this field, and in 1984 wrote the classic textbook, Instantons and Four Manifolds, 
with her colleague at the University of Texas, Dan Freed. This book continues to inspire generations of mathematicians as one of the best texts ever written on gauge theory. Finally, I want to say just a few words about Karen's outreach work. In the early 90s, together with Dan Freed and others, she set up the Park City Mathematics Program, an outreach initiative held in Park City, Utah. This is an intensive three-week annual residential conference that creates an environment that provides a unique opportunity for research mathematicians to interact and exchange ideas with school teachers and students. Around this time, she also set up, together with Chulian Tung, the Women and Mathematics program at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, with the mission to recruit and retain more women in mathematics. Karen Ullenbeck is the 20th winner of the Arbel Prize. She is also the first woman to win it. This is not in any way a reflection on the Arbel Committee, but rather stresses the huge gender imbalance in the field of mathematics and the difficulties and challenges faced by those women mathematicians. After all, in 2014, Miriam Merzakhani became the only woman to win the Fields Medal in Mathematics among its 60 recipients. And Donna Strickland was only the third woman to win the Nobel Prize for Physics just last year. Karen Ullenbeck has been and continues to be a staunch advocate for greater gender diversity in mathematics and science. As a woman, she encountered tough personal hurdles in her career and for a while even struggled to come to terms with her own success. Now, she says she appreciates it as a privilege. She's well aware of being a role model for young female mathematicians in particular, and the award of the Arbel Prize is, I have no doubt, only going to help her in this regard. I leave you with this quote from Karen. I have found great delight and pleasure in the pursuit of mathematics. I've been saved from boredom, dourness, and self-absorption. One cannot ask for more. Thank you. <laughs>